This is a CBS News special report. I'm Gail King here in New York. We have just learned this morning that O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. His agent said he had been suffering from prostate cancer. Now, this news comes on social media from the family of the former star running back who was tried and acquitted for the murder of his ex-wife and then found liable for her death in a lawsuit. Simpson's life story is extraordinary. He grew up poor in San Francisco, became a sports legend who won the Heisman Trophy while playing for the University of Southern California back in 90, 1968 and set records in the NFL and then moved into acting and TV work. He was one of the most desired commercial endorsers in the 1970s and 80s, but his career fell apart in 1995 when he was accused of stabbing his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and a friend of hers, Ron Goldman, in her home in Los Angeles. He was arrested after a long, infamous police chase that lasted for hours. After one of the most controversial trials in recent memory, Simpson was found not guilty of both murders. Goldman's family then sued O.J. Simpson, and a jury ordered him to pay $33 million in a wrongful death judgment. But that was not the end of his legal troubles. In 2008, he was convicted in a kidnapping and robbery scheme involving some of his own memorabilia. He served nine years in prison before he was paroled in 2017. Joining me now by phone is journalist Ed Gordon, who covered the O.J. Simpson trial for BET, and he was the first journalist to interview Simpson after his acquittal. Ed Gordon, good morning to you. Good morning, Gail. Ed, I actually remember that day. I was watching that interview. I think the, the country was riveted to that interview because we all wanted to hear what O.J. Simpson had to say. What, were your, what was your thought when you heard that he had passed away this morning? I literally, Gail, am at an airport. I just got off the plane and uh, checked my phone. Needless to say, I was getting all kind of calls and texts, and it is a, a bit surreal. I mean, we all can go at any moment. But to think about, as you read, uh, who O.J. Simpson was, uh, this star running back, arguably at his time, the greatest running back of all time in the NFL, then to become a pitchman and a, a movie star, and then, um, you know, the tragedy that befell the Goldman family and what it's become. And so I, I think back, Gail, as you know, uh, how divided this country was based on that trial. It's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Ed, I still remember when that verdict came in. He's, he still proved to be, I think, up until the end, a very divisive character. At the time, it seemed to be divided among racial lines. You know, I remember there was a lot of celebration in the streets from some members of the black community, and a lot of people were just in shock when the verdict came in when he was acquitted. What do you remember about that time? Well, I remember that specifically, and I also think it's important for us to say, Gail, that I think a lot of African Americans had their doubts as to whether he was innocent or not, and much of the yes. cheering was not necessarily for O.J. Simpson, as much as it was for someone who, as misguided as this may sound at first glance, uh, had beat the system, that African Americans had uh, for so many years been railroaded into jail that you finally had someone rich enough. Uh, and powerful enough to maybe, and I underline that, evade the system. But it's an extraordinary time that we live through. Uh, you know, you think about the white Bronco and the chase and all that led up to his arrest. And um, I don't know that we would be able to even think about the proportion of it today simply because social media, think about this, Gail, had he been mm -hmm. on the freeway, even though the helicopters uh, followed him, you would have had so many camera angles from phones and everybody trying to be, uh, you know, the reporter on the scene. It's just an extraordinary time. You know, he was acquitted in, the, in that case, but there was forever still a cloud over O.J. Simpson. And how do you think he navigated that? Because, you know, many times he would still be walking in the streets. People were asking for his autograph, yeah. wanting to take a photo with him. And still there were others that saw him as a pariah. That's a great question, Gail. I had been with him on a number of occasions after the fact. And what he would do is when he would see someone looking at him, he would quickly go to them and say hello to them before they could say anything. It was a, a disarming tactic on his part, if you will. So if he was afraid they were going to say something uh, rude or vile, uh, he would try to disarm them with because he was a charismatic person. 
Uh, he was bigger than life in, in, in many instances. And so he would try to speak first, and, and he was, and some people will rail at this, but he was charming at times. And so he, he leaned on that charm to disarm people. Yeah, charming is not what the Goldman family feels about him or no, many members. Not. Of, certainly no, not. No, 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 the Goldman family or the Simpson family, and I was always thinking about them during times like this. Yeah, and it's it's hard to really kind of put your arms around this. It didn't bring any of those uh, people back. It didn't ease the pain of uh, those families who still today grieve the loss of those two people. And, and he always, Ed, even right up until the end, he always maintained that he was innocent. He did maintain that, uh, as you say, until the day he passed away. Uh, and he was quick to suggest that uh, he always was, in his words, searching for the killer. There were those who will suggest he never did that. But he did maintain he had absolutely nothing to do with it. And as hard as that is uh, to believe uh, for many people, and you think about this, Gail, for as long as it's been since those gruesome murders, O.J. Simpson remained, up until uh, he died, uh, the face of a murderer for many. Even today, mm -hmm. there yes. will be uh, comedians who will use him as the butt of a joke. And so it was, uh, it was something that stuck to him until his last days. Ed Gordon, thank you so much. When I got the news, you know, listen, we had heard that he was sick and that he'd been sick for a while, but it was still very um, jarring to get the news because it just brought back all the memories about that trial. And I still, to this day, keep thinking about the tragedy of the Simpson family and the Ron Goldman family. Thank you, Ed Gordon. Thank you for, for talking with us this morning. Just a reminder, we are remembering O.J. Simpson. He has died at the age of 76. His agent said that he'd been suffering from prostate cancer. O.J. Simpson's family said that he was surrounded by his children and his grandchildren when he died last night. There will be more coverage on our streaming service, CBS News 24-7, and tonight on the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. Many of you will now return to CBS Mornings. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Gail King, CBS News here in New York.